Hello. Today I want to talk um, about, in fact, two uh, things in Microsoft Azure. The one thing um, I'm going to talk about is API apps, and the second thing is uh, API management. It took me a while to understand how both of them can work together, and uh, there are some issues right now in uh, bringing them together, and I want to show you how I solved this issue, kind of. Um, it's not a solving um, in fact of in, in terms of security and things like that, but uh, it solved a lot of problems to me, and I want to share it with you. So first, I'm going to talk about API apps and uh, what are they, and for what do I use them. And to show you this, I just start by creating one. Um, you go to find new project, classically, and API apps are hiding themselves kind of <laughs> inside of ASP.NET Web application. What I show you now um, will change in just a few days because uh, a few days from now the new Visual Studio 2015 will arrive and uh, things going to change a little bit. So just keep that in mind. Okay, when you go and hit new ASP.NET Web application, you will um, confront it with this dialog which comes from ASP.NET and in this dialog you can choose API app and uh, be aware that preview stands here which I will show you is uh, not a joke it is preview and um, a lot of things don't work uh, I think like they should but if you hit this um, Azure API app it will create a project template for you w and I did this already so I just show you this in another Visual Studio. I cancelled this and here you can see the skeleton of the API app which comes um, when you do this. And uh, what you notice is that API apps are uh, having some folders which are familiar to those people which uh, used uh, web API projects um, which you can do in the future too. It's not um, a kind of uh you know, for should I use this or that. Uh, both of them lead to um, REST APIs, if you want them. Uh, but this project type, API app, is more consequent in terms of I just want um, to provide an API. I don't want to have all this stuff like um, uh, view controllers, which uh, are there to provide uh, something to my customers to, to show them an API and things like that. So <coughs> when you <coughs> when you start, usually you start inside of the controllers folder because um, everything is circling around. I just added commands here uh, around API controller, like in Web API. It's the same thing. Routing everything is the same, and uh, I just <coughs> um, removed all the stuff, post and delete um, methods. I just uh, left two methods, get and get by ID, um, which is uh, sufficient, uh, sufficient uh, for this demo. Uh, what I did, I added commands. I added those commands to show you how uh, you uh, th these commands are flowing into the API commands. And with this, I just start a debug session to show you what comes into place. First of all, um, most people are a little bit, mm, you know, uh, disturbed because they get this forbidden page. It's just because there is no visible thing inside this folder. I just switch back to my Visual Studio. There is no home controller or um, any other controller which provides views. In fact, here is um, no views folder inside. So um, this message comes from uh, the issue that you don't have uh, the right um, tri um, in, in default to browse uh, the home folder and that's why the forbidden um, HTTP error comes. So uh, what you can do now is you can go to the app start and you will find a new thing called swagger config. If you don't know what swagger is, that's um, not too complicated. Go to um, Google, type in swagger and you will see that it's a uh, it's a standard, when you will, to provide API uh, documentation and UI to 
a huge amount of uh, APIs, REST APIs, and they can be written in, in any language that you can imagine. And Microsoft decided, like they do in the, in the last time, times, they decided to implement Swagger, which is an open source project, uh, into API apps and natively. Uh, in fact, it is a NuGet package, Swagger itself, and you can go to your existing web API project and implement Swagger and it will work quite the same like it does in this sample. So in the Swagger config, what you will find is a, is a config, classically there's only the register method, and you will find, let me just make this a little bit bigger, you will find something that is using uh, anonymous typing and it's uh, looking a little bit like JSON, which is intended because it's, it's like a JSON config. And what I did is I uncommented simply something, two things. First of all, I uncommented this line, enable Swagger UI. And the, the second thing I uncommented is include XML commands, XML commands. And I did this and I implemented this method get XML commands path, which is simply a method which returns this, let me just correct this, uh, I usually I take uh, lower caps, but anyway. And this is just using the app domain's base directory, uh, which points to this directory uh, when it runs, and then goes to the bin folder and the sample API app XML, uh, which I produce, by going to the build properties and just um, checking in XML doc documentation file, which generates this. The main thing, the, the uh, very important thing is that you do this in release two. You have to do it twice in debug and in release. Um, so I did this and now Swagger, I go back to my browser. It's reachable when you just append slash Swagger to your URL and this will show up. <coughs> you get an UI which is generated by uh, Swagger and a package called Swashbuckle. Um, but don't don't um, keep this in mind because when you just create a new API project you can discover this all for yourself. That's There's nothing magical. Then you get um, an area for each controller that you provide. Remember that we just have a values controller and he gets your documentation for all the get posts and whatever you uh, created and here you can see that the commands which I just placed here you see this command and this command will show up here so th um, what's good about this uh, swagger or what's better about this than in our web API project is you can even um, go to this method and try it out. I just do it now, try it out, and he will show us the response, the response headers, the response code, and I even can say, hey, just give me XML, and you see what happens when you, when you um, change the request headers here. That's pretty cool and it's um, better, I think, than the web API um, type of uh, documentation because it's interactive too. And you can just um, give <coughs> people this URL to say, hey, when you want to use my API, just go to this URL and um, you don't need any description because it's there. You can use it with JavaScript or whatever you want. That's cool. But now, which where there is a chance, there's a problem too. But now what is when you want to restrict the access to your API? Yeah, you don't want just people poking on your API services and disturbing everything. You want to have control over this. So <coughs> to show you this, first of all, I want to deploy this API app to Azure in, in my case. And what I do is I just hit publish. Oh, I have to stop it first. I hit publish on the project and here you can see you can do it the normal way with web apps um, and you can do it the new way and say I want to publish it with um, to an Azure API app. I do this 
and um, he's now searching for existing API apps. I don't have one, so I hit new. And I say, okay, let's leave the name in sample API app. It's okay. I just go to some account, in my case, a Bispark account. Um, <coughs> I uh, select an app, uh, an API service plan. Um, in my case, I create a new one and say, I name it sample plan. And now a resource group. And I can say, okay, let's go to the default West Europe group and it's available to anyone that's an important thing you can uh, switch between three options first of all available to anyone uh, which is clearly saying that everyone in the internet can access it public authenticated access and available only to other apis in this resource group i just select available to anyone because i want to restrict the access not by restricting it on the level on of api app i want to to the api app to be controlled by api management which i introduce a little bit later so i use available to anyone the region here in my case is west europe which is the nearest one to me and i just select ok and now comes a warning which says, hey, uh, something will be created in Azure now. So be aware of this. And I just hit OK, do it. And now um, I have to wait for the creation of the API app. So to um, clear another thing out, I just switch to the, it's working. I just switch to the old Azure portal, my old Azure portal, because I want to show you a little bit which is currently very strange uh, here. <coughs> so in the old Azure uh, portal, there is no point stating, let me zoom this a little bit for you. There's nothing stating, hey, API app. So you can't manage API apps here in the old portal. When I switch to the new portal, there is something called API app. Let me zoom it. So that means when you want to manage an API app, you have to go to the new portal. When you want to um, uh, manage API management, which comes a little bit uh, uh, in the future in this webcast, you have to think differently, the opposite, because here is nothing to create a new API management. This is inside the old portal. So this is a little bit confusing because you are switching between old and new portal, but it's um, uh, very important to know uh, in which portal you can do what. So that's uh, confusing me all the time. This is uh, just taking a little bit right now. And now he says Azure API app mm -hmm, is provisioned. That's true, but it's confusing to, to most people because I did this by hitting publish and a lot of people think that it is published already. That's not true. He just created the API app and let, let us see where, uh, where it is. So when we go to our server explorer, which is connected in my case to my Azure account, and I just hit refresh under the app services, he is refreshing. Just waiting for him to finish. And by the way, I took a slip of coffee. He's refreshing. So now he's not showing us our sample API. He's showing uh, the resource group. And inside it has created the sample API app. And when we drill a little bit deeper and go to the files folder, and waiting for refresh, you see there are just two files, API app JSON and hosting start HTML. So there is no logic, nothing deployed, because the first publish when you create the API app um, physically, the, the resource in Azure, there's no publishing included. So afterwards you have to hit publish again. That's the solution kind of. And now it's filled with the credentials um, he downloaded it automatically after creating the API app and you hit publish again and now it's publishing the, the classic publishing <coughs> and when this is done 
a browser will open, your default browser will open, and that's the signal to you, oh, he published a new version. That's every time the same. And in this case, this hosting start HTML is um, uh, very important because this is the HTML, the static HTML, which he presents us now. This is just a simple HTML file. So another thing which is important to you, if you have, um, uh, if you replace this hosting start HTML, you can a little bit more, take a little bit more control over what is presented under this URL. Let me talk about this URL a little bit. Uh, <coughs> this URL is ugly. That's clear. And because API apps are uh, built on top of uh, all the other web stuff, um, surely you yeah, there, there are options where you can say, hey, I don't want this URL to be promoted to my customers. I want to take a custom URL. In this case, you would go to the portal, to the new portal. Remember, you just have to um, go to the new portal because it's the only place where you can uh, configure it. And you go to your API app, and here are a lot of options, which I explain a little bit deeper now. And in this options, in this uh, settings, for example, there are um, uh, there are possibilities to um, you know control the API app itself, or you go to a thing called gateway. The gateway is um, you know the network entry point for this API app. A gateway can control more than one API app, but in our case, it is the gateway for this API app. And when I click on gateway, now there's a possibility, you see it here, gateway. Now I can go to settings here. And in in this settings, I have, it's, it's just, uh, just important to know, I have different properties for the gateway. That's the first level. The, the first level settings here is for the API app, settings here is for the gateway. And now you have a host, an API app host, which is, um, if you want to, the machine on which it runs the API app. Um, and this machine has a lot of more settings. For example, here, you can say, hey, <coughs> this is more like the settings for an ASP.NET IIS um, in the cloud. And here um, are points to say I uh, want the user defined domain. Uh, just be don't be confused because it's um, I forgot to switch back to to English in the user interface. Just uh, watch the symbols here because they are same on each languages. And what you can see is I just created already um, an API uh, and and custom domain uh, on this API host. But the problem is custom domains are for some reasons not working currently on API apps. That's one, what I wanted to show you. That means, in my case, I just created this, um, a, this um, URL. And when I enter this URL, nothing will happen because it's not simply not working. Um, the problem is I bought this domain. <laughs> And that's kind of um, at um, GoDaddy, and that's kind of mm, weird because I'm now paying for this domain and can't use it for my API. I think um, I can't do anything about it because uh, I just ignored the preview tag <laughs> and just tried it, and that's the price that you pay when you use something which is preview um, in Azure. But anyway, we just have to um, uh, consider this as our entry point. And now, when I go to slash swagger, there is swagger, and uh, this is a public swagger version. And I can do the same thing, and everything is commented the same thing. And I can say try it out, and there it is. So it works in the cloud now. Good and bad at the same time, because I don't want all types of people to just try out on my API in, in most cases. So what I can do now. The first and simple thing, I just close this browser, and this one minimizing. <coughs> the first thing which I can, what I can do is I <coughs> can um, uh, provide a static key for customers, which I prepared here in the config. It's a simple one. See it here. I just add an app settings, 
and set in my case api.key equals one two three four okay but to uh, s uh, to tell api apps that this key is, uh, is is valuable i have to um switch it on so i did this in um in terms of a filter which is you can see it here there is a filter and i come to back to this filter in a little bit and i just want to show you i don't want to show you the whole complete filter now because you can't understand everything but i want to show you what you can do um, um, theor uh, theoretically so to show you options and now when i have this filter i go to my web api config and i just uncomment this line which says which says hey i want to add a uses api management attribute filter to all of my requests automatically um, <coughs> so i don't have to tell it each method or each controller by adding a tag on the top and so uh, i just want to try it out locally i start this one and go to swagger mm -hmm. locally on my computer and now when i go to the api and say hey try it out he says no 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 i get a 305 um, result no you can't do this because you are mm, apparently not coming over an api management url which is a little bit faked now i enter my key and i say try it out again and now it works and when i enter a wrong key it doesn't work so that is the first security layer i show you how i implemented it later um, but you, s you you know this the sentence here this one it's simply not true um, because i faked it a little bit um, so we have to do a little bit more to get more control over our api that's not a good way just stating one two three four of whatever complicated key it's a good starting point but not everything okay let's go back um for the further uh, considerations visual studio isn't needed in fact <coughs> so i switch to the portal and uh, i switch to the old portal because i want to do something in api management and what you see here is i have two api managements api management is in fact a service saying um, no matter if you hosted something in azure or somewhere else just tell us about your rest apis microsoft says to us and we will take care um, of uh, providing you in a central point of entry to your apis and we will do more than that which you will see just in a, in a minute we will provide uh, a whole portal for your api so that everyone um, every developer which is interested in your product can go there and uh, can see the documentation and everything it's it's a complete product not just something for azure so when i go inside the test management there's a lot of stuff which you know already uh, know already um, how tools and things and the main thing here is the manage button on the bottom i go to manage and I'm logged in and what you see now is the portal for the administrator that's nothing what your customers will see um, it's just for administrators and the first thing which is very cool it's um, it's divided in two sections first of all the management of the API itself itself here and second is the developer portal which is um, how do i want to uh, the experience for the developers to be like medias blogs content you can uh, do anything for the portal which i show you um, in, in a bit this is not the portal this is the admin area for the portal if you want to now <coughs> when you go to apis you see that there is already an api which i provide but i want to input a new api and that's what i do here so now um this api management says okay you want to provide a new set of uh, methods and name it in, in in a way and the easiest thing to do this is to go to from url and what we know too is we don't use uh, wadl we use swagger for our api um, documentation but what kind of url should i provide here 
So let's go back to our testing site here. Um, and well, I did something stupid. I just closed the window, but that's okay. Uh, I show you the way how you can find the URL using the portal. So I go to the new Azure portal where my API app ho uh, is hosted here. And you see here, let's go back to our sample API app. Let's close all this stuff here, just to be com not to be confused. This is our API app, which we created. And we can copy the URL here. Yeah, allow this, copy. And just, I just open a new window, enter it, and you come easily to your Swagger in the cloud. Now what's important is when you see this text box at the top, you see this is saying slash swagger slash docs slash v1. So this is the swagger endpoint, which is when you just take this URL, what comes out is JSON. This is the definition of what you are providing in the cloud. All the methods, all the stuff is placed here. So we can take this URL and go back to our API management and give him this URL to the Swagger docs. Now what we say is it is a new API. So if you are adding something or refreshing an API, you would go to existing API. We just tell, let's call it sample, so that it will be available under this URL slash sample in our test MGM Azure API.net. I will come to this later. And what we are saying too is we will provide HTTPS only. And now it comes to something saying products here at the bottom. A products is something API management um, brings into place. And uh, by default, you have two products, which is data and unlimited. And this is very, very cool because <coughs> when you um, select starter you will say everybody can access this one there uh, in inside the starter product I will show you this too there's no limitation uh, no uh, everybody can sign up for a starter plan it's something like uh, a testing platform and what API management delivers you is to say this product starter you can add API's to this product of you and this starter product will limit the amount of requests a person can uh, do against the API automatically. It's like five requests per minute um, is set up here. This is very cool and I first uh, use starter. I save this and what he's doing now, he's going to the Swagger endpoint which I provided and he reads it and now you can see under operations that he got it and he's saying, hey, I discovered two methods, values, um, um, controller get values controller get by ID both are get requests and um, that's it I, I discovered it you can do a little uh, a lot of more stuff here but first of all we take a look at this products which I mentioned here they are products I have two product I can products I can add more and this starter product is uh, saying subscribers will be able to run five calls per minute up to a maximum of 100 calls per week so you can uh, just do this and uh, the unlimited account, uh, you s see it here, requires an approval of the user, which is saying, hey, I want to get unlimited um, uh, access to your API. And now you can do something like, hey, you have to pay for this, like five bucks or whatever. And when the payment arrives, you can approve him. And you can lock him again when mm, you know something happens and he's misusing API or whatever. You have full control because you have a complete list of users um, later on which are subscribed to any product currently. You see it? Uh, here are some of my colleagues which are subscribed already to a product and which are using from the, from the other API which you have seen in the portal which are using it. And I'm for myself, I'm subscribed to automatically. That's good. So, okay, um, you can do some other stuff which is not, um, you know, in the scope of this tutorial, like notifications for your users um, when something changes or I don't know what. 
and you can go to security of your complete API management and you can do interesting stuff and what I did is I used identities to say hey I created a Microsoft account um, you can create this Microsoft account under your developer account of Microsoft and what you get is a client ID and a client secret and <coughs> you just uh, um, create an app which is in the Microsoft account which is your API a product if you want to and Microsoft is providing you all of authentication by using this redirecting URL which you provide to the settings in Microsoft and this client ID in secret and what this means is everything underneath this API management can be authenticated against the Microsoft account and naturally you can see my Google Facebook login whatever you can implement this even Active Directory and you can say no just use username password um, simple uh, detection so I don't um, for users which don't have any of those accounts I can provide an internal username password authentication everything is set up already there you don't have to do anything to, to use this so in fact what you see now is this API management is not only providing you list of API's it's a website around this list of API's to manage it so and if you want to take a look at how it looks for users which are visiting your um, API you can go to dashboard and you see here there's a developer portal URL and you can go there and now you can see that's the view every one of you in fact can go to this URL now which is uh, stating there and take a look at this this is a public website and it's just um, you know a suggestion of Microsoft you can take care of nearly everything here and uh, just change colors change uh, texts and everything um, and now I'm logged in automatically because my browser session is logged in as an administrator and that means that I have um, clearly full access but when I go to APIs I now see my sample API app which does not have a, a description right now and I can go there from here from the portal and I can see all these methods here on the left and even the commands are where, where, where I get from uh, my swagger uh, everything is, is right there and now he says that's it's a URL the rest URL to get uh, directly through this portal of API management to my Swagger URL and I don't have to take care about the fact that this URL here on the top is ugly you see because this URL uh, is, is, is being hidden by API management everybody is supposed to go through API management and now I can try it out from here too which is not so nice like uh, um, th than using it from Swagger but it's important to do it uh, to be able so people can try it out and what you see here is they are saying hey which is the subscription key that you will use to uh, create a request using API management because API management now will take a look at what you are doing and will report it for me as the one which uh, uh, provides this portal and will say hey <coughs> he has done like uh, 3000 requests last week or something like that and now I can just send the request and what I get is a 200 OK but uh, and I can see everything the headers and, and stuff and now in the moment we see this everyone can say hey just a second what is this what is this for an URL just zoom in and when you see it you 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 it's clear to you that a developer could decide to say oh this is the URL which he's calling so mm, what will um, what will be if I use this URL directly and go there and just you know uh, don't use the API management but go directly to the API this manages so that will be very bad because um, <coughs> I wanted to uh, use API management so nobody will go directly to this place so what I can do now and that's what this tutorial is in fact about so the, the designated way by Microsoft to provide uh, more control over this is a two-step thing first of all you are able 
<coughs> to create in under the security on your API management, you are able to upload certificates uh, to use them as client certificates um, from the side of API management, uh, from the perspective. This is something like you just deployed your API app, which I did in the first step, and said, hey, API app, I want you to be, to be configured just to use this client certificate to check every request if it takes this or if it buries this client certificate and to ignore all requests which are not coming with this certificate. That is the best option you can have because um, it's very hard to you know, um, cr crack out this certificate and uh, put it into attacker's requests to, to do something like, hey, I'm valid, I can do this. So that's a good way, but sadly enough, it's not working simply. So you could upload a certificate here. You can create your own certificate at, uh, at this point uh, using the make cert, uh, dot exe, and you can use this here, this client certificate, but there is no way, currently no way, to tell API management, uh, where is it? Just a second, um, uh, API app, I meant. So I have to go this one. S uh, sadly, there's no possibility in this portal to upload the certificate to this API app and, and saying, hey, you, you're just using this uh, certificate, please. I saw some tutorials in the internet, to be fair, that are stating that you can do it s somehow uh, in inside of Visual Studio. To be honest, I didn't unders understand everything there and it seems to be very compli complicated and I have to say that I don't like those complicated, um, you know, go that and this and this step and then it might happen like you want because of two reasons. First of all, it's too complicated to do it um, inside of production or environments. It's, it's just hard to understand for me how I can implement this step in things like MS Build and, uh, and stuff like that. And second of all, I know that um, this is something which Microsoft will probably fix in the, in the future and they are not fixing it in two years or something like that. I expect it to be fixed in the next two or three months. But on the other side, uh, one could say, so what are you talking about? Just wait until they fix it and then use it. But that's not the way we work. I want to now to be able to uh, you know, um, explore this feature and um, so I found a way for me to do this in the first step, to, to do it a little bit more secure, not secure in fact. So what I did is, or what I want to achieve is that nobody, just to, um, just to tell you what I want, nobody should be able to do requests against directly this one uh, when he's not aware of the secret key or he's coming from API management. So I want uh, to have a very strong secret key, not one, two, three, four. Um, uh, I want to have a strong secret key. I want to say, hey, when you know this secret key, you can access me. That is, you hacked me, okay, just access me. Um, but when you don't know the secret key, you have to go to the API management portal, which was told to you, uh, hopefully, and you have to re register there with an account, with a Microsoft account currently, and then you have to um, uh, go through this API management URL to, state to, to take requests to me. So to do this, I simply, <coughs> I just um, mentioned it before, I integrated something like called a filter. It comes from the MVC and web um, thing from Microsoft, the filter theory. And what a filter is simply, it is something which is inheriting from a certain thing, and in my case, an action filter attribute. Action filter uh, does not come from MVC, it's coming directly from system.web. Um, so it is a filter, which means that um, on server side, I inject something inside of the chain, which um, checks requests, uh, which are taken against the API, and I'm allowed to override on action executing or on action executed, which is just the time uh, which I want to in, in inject with my code. And I can say if something's going wrong inside of executing this action, um, which I can state what means goes wrong, 
then just uh, go back and tell him, no, 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 you can't do this. And that's a good point for us. So what I'm doing now first, I'm checking if there is an API key and in, inside of my config. And if there's no API key in my config, I say, okay, well that means it's an open API, go. Go and uh, just leave us alone. But if there is an API key, then I will check a lot of things. First of all, I check if there's a header called OCP API M subscription key, whatever. And this comes from our API management. So if I just let me see it. If I take a look, <coughs> you see here this he um, header in the request, which is something um, this um, API management does all the time. It is pushing the subscription key um, in clear text. You can take a look at it here, which I don't want to do now <laughs> for obvious reasons. And it is saying, hey, you can, um, I, I will post the uh, subscription key to the API app. And I'm using this fact just to check at this point here, just to check if there is such a header. And now I say when there is such a header, this is probably seems to come from Azure API management. And now I check two things. First of all, I check <coughs> um, if uh, there is a value inside of it. And then I check when this is true, I check if there is a specific user agent, which is simply EMA gateway. This is set by API management too. You can see it. Um, and I said, okay, this means it comes with a, whole, uh, with a high probability, this comes from API management. If, if someone knew that, if an attacker knew all this stuff, he is able to hack me to be sure because he knows I simply have to say something like, hey, uh, I, I sent a header, there stands nothing sensible in it, but I call it OCP, API, M, blah, blah, blah. And I, uh, and I fake my request by stating I'm an e EMA gateway. He could do this, but this is a secret. It's security by obscurity, kind of. But it works currently. So um, this is because I can check the value of this header out of my uh, settings because this value is not static. It is uh, controlled by API management and there comes another key for each user. Each user has another access key, subscription key, whatever. And I um, could try to access this on API management, but remember, this is a workaround which I present to you. It's just a workaround to do it now and to test out API management for our own API apps. So if this is, <coughs> um, um, if all this stuff uh, is not coming from API app, I check against my own implementation, which is, uh, rem uh, remember, I said uh, I can do it with a static key. So if I do this, I'm saying, hey, I want to do this one here. One, two, three, four values and say get. And now at this moment, he what he's doing is he's adding um one two three four to um the request you see it here he's just adding a suffix a suffix to a url and that's what i'm trying to detect here i uh, know in fact here in this part so and this part says hey he might not put it to me in the U uri because it might be a post request and in this cases it's um it's possible that he is giving me a request header saying API key. So I just basically I just check either it comes from um, API management or uh, someone is using Swagger inside directly. And if he uses Swagger, then he has to provide me the correct API key. That's all I do. And if something went wrong, I just say at the end, hey, um, give him a message. Uh -huh and then say uh, create a response directly here and saying uh, use a proxy to access me. I don't know if this is the real exact uh, status code I should provide, but I do it. Uh, it's the 305 status code and it makes sense to me to say, hey, use another URL to access me. Don't go directly to this URL. So that is what, what I do. I return here 
and uh, if if everything is okay, I just say, hey, hey, go on with the with the default stuff of web uh, HTTP. So that's all, and then I have to implement this in my web API config, which is the starting point, and I just said, hey, use the API management. And we tested this out locally already, and now I publish this simply, and I update my site. And now I want to check this out with you. He's publishing. And the first I want to check is, is someone able to just say, hey, cool, there's an endpoint, and it's very available data, and I don't know this key because I'm just a guy from somewhere, and I try this out, and he stated, oh, no, 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 you can't do this, because you can't do directly to this API. And now, this is, let's say, uh, a colleague of me, and he's saying, oh man, I need Swagger so hard because it's so cool to debug and everything, and I just want to, I know this key because it's, you know, it's staying at the desk, and I say, hey, let's try it with the key one, two, three, four, and hey, it, it, it works. So that means this key has to be has strictly is forbidden to post it anywhere in the internet, logically. This is something, this is secret to, to my developer team. And if I'm, um, if I have a, a customer for which I take this, I would tell him the key and tell him to put it in a safe or something like that. So the normal way would be to go to the portal. And I just, let's say I go to my test portal and I say, hey, refresh here, this all the stuff. And now I'm just a visitor of this portal. I go to the home again and uh, someone just told me this one or I found it in the internet, this URL here, and told me, hey, hey, this is a cool API, you have to see it. And I go there and I say, hey, uh, this is cool API, hmm, let's see, sample API app, okay. I just hit there and say, what do they provide? Oh, it's a get method, hmm, I'll try it and I'll go try it. And I see, oh, I have to do this and that and, oh, okay, send. And there is, I get a 200 and I get this values. But what happens when I do this seven times? One, two, three, four, five, and now it's failing. You see this? And that's what I wanted to reach because API management says, hey, 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 you are in starter. You are just a guest which registered here. I just show it in a minute. And you you can't do this amount of requests uh, to my API because it's just to, you know, it's you have wait a minute, please, sir, or pay for you. What do you want to do? So when I go to this URL as, let's say, an, not an admin, I take a new browser and let's say he, he does not know me. I'm not signed in. And what now? I go to the APIs and I go there. Let's do this. Hmm. See? <laughs> See how it slows down? <laughs> no, just joking. Um, and I go try it. And now he's saying, you are not subscribed to this API, blah, blah, blah. Um, go to the products page and, okay. Well, I just say send, what happens now? And he says, no, 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 you can't send because you don't have a subscription key. Oh, I understand. I have to go to the products page and I have to say, I want to use starter or something like that. And now I have to subscribe to get access to these APIs. Okay, I subscribe. I take a Microsoft account because that's what I configured. And I say, no, 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 let's do this one because the other one is an admin account. Hopefully it works. Okay, then this one comes. This is a customized page from Microsoft. And I say, yes, I want to allow the API to uh, share this information with Microsoft. And I just say, this is my email. Uh, this is uh, kind of confusing to some people. This is the email which API management stores inside its own database because it's not just simply taking um, your, in this case, Microsoft Live ID if you want to, 
to store it because it could be that the live ID, which is in fact an email, but it is in login name and uh, API app says in the right way, no, I don't want to expose this login name in completely other databases. Just decide which email you want to use. It could be the same, but it don't has to. So I do this and now I'm a member. So, okay, this is my account. I now go back to APIs because now I want to uh, try this out. I go to this one. And now uh, when I try it, I have a subscription should have a subscription key just let's see no I didn't buy uh, bought any products sorry for this confusion but this will happen to you too <laughs> I subscribe to starter which is okay because in uh, I will show you what happens when I subscribe to the other one unlimited and now I go to APIs now I have a key this is the right way when I go to the API now uh, and try it out you will see ah now he ha he has it and now I can send a request and I can get everything and now what happens when I say oh that's not enough because when I hit it seven times or five times or more now this is all badly I need more power so I can go to products and say I need unlimited so I go there and say hey 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 please subscribe when I do this now you see my API my sample API doesn't show up here that is because I as an admin said just let's see API on the admin sa side I said this API has just one product here the starter now I can do go and say add it to unlimited to so it is it is providing an unlimited subscription now and now when I go here and just refresh this page he says hey you you will get those two APIs I say yeah that's what I want subscribe and now I say confirm but at this point it's just having had sub submitted a subscription request to the admin now when I go to back to my admin portal and I say dashboard it's showing up here it's showing up hey someone is interested here in the unlimited uh, uh, product and I can go there in this point and say so where are the requests here on the top and say hey, hey uh, this guy he's a cool guy I know him let's improve him so I'm approved now go back to the other browser and saying refresh <coughs> and now I have two subscriptions I have starter and unlimited I have keys for this um, and now I can go to my API sample API try it out and now I can say which key do I want to use starter or unlimited you get two keys for each the primary and secondary and that is that is cool so what you've seen here at the first point by the way sample API app here this first page is very very useful when you say hey, I want to do it by JavaScript now this doesn't mean that this is th the best reference code to do it but you see it's just using um, uh, jQuery and things like that to show you how would you uh, create this one by adding the params including a subscription key which you have to add there and uh, now a JavaScript client would use this URL to HTTPS secured take requests to your API so that was the story I wanted to t uh, to show you I just uh, will um, hold this uh, portal alive and let's see what what happens it's just uh, interesting to me I I don't um, can say I will take it alive all the time let's say for one month from now it uh, will be available just to be sure I want to show you this is the URL and if you're interested in uh, you can go there and uh, just uh, uh, 
you know try it out if you want to um, and uh, the other API which you see there is a POC API it's not so um, it's not so valuable for you but if you like to try it out it's okay and we will see what happens um, I will not uh, give you unlimited access please understand that but the starter access will be free and that's it okay I hope you've seen uh, a lot of interesting stuff and like me now you can better understand what what's this all about API app and API management what's the difference and why are they hiding there and what are the problems that was the point and uh, thank you for listening and see you bye